And I just finished watching the season three Mandalorian finale. And these are my thoughts. Right, I am the man you may know as Ian. I have done an awful lot of whining about Star Wars, so I'm going to keep it going. Just got to keep it going. Can't stop. Won't stop. Never stop stopping. That's right. Mandalorian Season 3 just ended, and I <laughs> literally just came and started recording this because I was like, Ugh. Now, I will say I was not as disappointed as I planned on being. I planned on being, like, agitated and angry and wanting to throttle someone and being like, wow. But no, I'm actually like, meh, meh, boo, 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 boo. do I care? Do I even care? Because they don't care. It's just interesting to me that they set up so many things only for them to be completely irrelevant in this finale. We'll go through it. We'll go through it bit by bit. But one thing that really stuck out to me is it made me think on some level, now, not in the same way as, uh, I hate to always bring up Ryan Johnson, but obviously, you know, when you direct The Last Jedi and ruin everyone's fun time with Star Wars, you gotta think of something, right? So, when I think of, of this season three, and, and especially this finale, I just, I have to think about Ryan Johnson, and even he thinks your Snoke theory sucks. Your Snoke theory sucks. He got a sticker for it. And remember that all the way back in, what was that, 2017? Let's see, when the, when was this article written from Inverse? 2016. So we're going back in the way back machine, people. And the only reason why I point this out is because here you have all these, these kind of little setups in The Mandalorian, and none of them pay off, and so much of the internal logic of the show doesn't make sense. Now, that doesn't mean that the finale was terrible. Does it redeem the season? Probably not. There was a lot of action. Things were mildly interesting. Uh, Din Jarn didn't totally get wussed out again. And obviously, there's going to be spoilers if you're watching this. I'm going to assume you saw the same thing that I saw. Or you want to hear me talk about it instead of you wasting your time. So, here are some of the theories that did not get paid off. And I haven't read anybody else's reviews necessarily or recaps. I'm just going off of memory. I do have an article that we'll kind of go over. And the only reason why I pulled it was because it was Din Djarin makes a triumphant return in season finale. I was like, really? <laughs> really, people? You guys have a distinctly different of what triumphant means than what it means to me. Uh, so all those cloning theories, right? Now, okay, they paid off in the beginning all the way back in season one when what was the reason for Goff, uh, uh, for Moff Gideon going back and taking the child, Baby Yoda, if you will, Grogu, Din Grogu. Why did he take him in the first place? Because he wanted to transplant, I guess, midichlorian cells or some nonsense. He wanted to have force powers because he was always trying to take things and enhance them. Okay, you, you paid that off. How does that exactly lead to Snoke and the Praetorian Guard? I do not know. I'm going to assume the Project Neco Necromancer is bringing back uh, the, you know, the Emperor, I guess. I, I, I don't really know where they're going with that, but it just felt like there was these weird payoffs and, and setups that didn't exist because I was fairly sure there was going to be a second, there's going to be someone who betrayed the Mandalorians because it's how they got caught in that trap in episode um, seven in the first place. Now I'm, I'm every, there was a bunch of theories. Oh, was it the, the dude who was fighting with her, who fought with her for control? I kept hearing her say his name was Ass. I don't know if his name is Ass, but it sure sounded like his name was Ass. So she's like, ass, where are you? I need my ass. And then you had, everybody was also saying, oh, maybe it was the armorer because the armorer made it back up to the ship. She like, she bolted when the, right before they were ambushed. Well, that never really paid off. Who was, unless I'm real dumb and I didn't catch it, and maybe you can explain it to me in the comments below, I must have missed while falling asleep, what happened with how they got betrayed. It's not very clear. 
The other thing that was extremely inconsistent, um, you know, payoff and set off, uh, set up and payoff is the dark saber. They spent so much time discussing who gets the dark saber and why you get the dark saber and Dave Filoni's favorite dark saber. Dark saber, dark saber. By the way, Dave Filoni makes a. Uh, I don't know if you caught him in the background of the bar at the end when Din Djarin goes to talk to the rebel leaders or whatever that Dave Filoni's sitting there in the background. So he condoned this. Uh, grand or not grand moff gideon he's not a grand moff uh moff gideon just crumples that thing like it's like a toothpick he's like scrunch don't worry about the dark saber. i want the dark saber. give me that dark saber baby i will need that dark saber crumple don't need it no more crumple who knew who knew so that means all those side quests, those side things to talk about the dark saber, all pointless because at any point, <laughs> Gideon could have just crumpled it. Uh, let's talk briefly about the the super inconsistent manner of Beskar steel. Is Beskar bulletproof? Is it knife proof? Is it all like I understand? There's armor. And then there's joints, and you can stab like underneath helmets and in between joints and things like that, but. There's an awful lot of dudes getting shot that were just like, blah, I got shot and I'm done. Even Mando fighting through all those layers of uh, Beskar troops. First of all, why would you have, <laughs> like, none of it made sense. You have these, like, they're like, oh, this will look cool. We'll have, like, you know, those laser beams, just like in, uh, the you know, episode one the laser beams you know and they have to wait to get through them and the the robot you know the droid he can he can open them whenever he wants yeah but then you you have two guards just standing there waiting waiting to die like what and then they're getting stabbed and shot and it's it's just oak it's okay so best car steel like it's it just doesn't make any sense like when's it bulletproof when's it not i'm pretty sure i watched Mando in season two gets shot by like 6,000 shots and he didn't even take any damage. It just hurt a little. So I don't know. It's killing some people, not killing others. Would the Praetorian guards have Beskar armor? You'd think they would, but apparently they don't. It's supposed to block lightsabers, but I don't know. Anyway, let's talk about the jetpack. <laughs> this, like, this is so stupid. And I hate to rain on your day if you really liked it. If you liked it, God bless you because you must you must like cartoons. <coughs> Cuz this is a kid show. It just it's a kid show. Andor's an adult show and they said, "Well, we need to make The Mandalorian a kid show." Even though in the first episode Mando cut some guy's head off with uh, you know, a, a door. That's kid show. Don't worry about. It. Don't you worry about. It. And or adult, sophisticated, you know. So anyway, jetpacks. They established in that one episode with the pterodactyl things that they could only go so far. There's only so much range those jetpacks can go. Yet that dude flies all the way from underneath the surface of Mandalore all the way up to his ship. Not a problem. Barely an inconvenience. He just got it done. No problem whatsoever. And then they're like, whoa, let's abandon ship. Let's all get to the drop ships. What do you need drop ships for? You could just fly right down to the planet. Y'all have jetpacks. Just drop down. Why are you going into drop ships? What's the point? You can fly wherever you want. No internal logic whatsoever. Just saying. Just saying. See, I knew I'd get myself agitated over this. I'm going to briefly review this article. Oh, and then I guess the, the last point I'll make is uh, I, d I did have flashbacks of Thanos kicking it at the end of the episode. He's like, I'm going to sit on my farm and wait for the next thing to happen. Like they're resetting the whole show where they're just like, we know you didn't like you, you weren't going to like season three because we had, we're making like a whole different show here. We, he'll go back to bounty hunting. We promise you next season, bounty hunting, Baby Yoda would be cute as a button. We took away the robot thing from him. He'll just be there. He got some force stuff, mischief, adventure. They even said, they even said, they said it. Carl Weathers said it. When you have fun on your, you can crash in between adventures right here on the planet and sit on your farm and you're going to go on some adventures. 
some adventure in. It'll be fun. You'll like it. Dirty dear. Oh my god. Oh god. Din Djarin finally gets to really show off in this episode. Yes, because he break like how did he break out of captivity? The <laughs> you can't even his scrappier fights are reminiscent reminiscent of Daredevil. What cr what cracked out planet are you smoke? What are you are you smoking the glass that's coming off of Mandalore? What are you doing? Absolutely ridiculous. So he's hunting for it. The cloning thing. I'm just like what? Am you, so you're telling me Moff Gideon has no more clones? No more. This is the only place he has clones. That's it. Don't worry. Not a big deal. Uh, what else do these guys? They think that Rick Famayawa... The, first of all, the fight scenes sucked. They weren't good. They look clumsy in their armor. They look like they don't know what they're doing. They kind of trip over each other. Not exciting. Not interesting. Strong... First of all, the volume, which we, we which we may have talked about a little bit, there was there were shots that looked so bad, just clearly inside the volume, bad, bad, bad CGI. Um, you know the pacing. Uh, they gave it a nine. IGN gave it a nine out of ten. What? I just clearly you're smoking the glass that's on Mandalore. Deeply satisfying finale. You might as well as had Jack Black show up and just sit on someone. Seriously. I, I'm not going to say it was terrible. I mean, it wasn't good. It, I, didn't, I did not find it satisfying. Maybe other people did. I did not. But come on. The whole ending with like Din Grogu. I'm supposed to call him Din... First of all, I barely, uh, I'm barely agreeing to call him Grogu. All right, he's Baby Yoda. He's not Grogu. And then but I'm not calling him Din Grogu. Sorry, I'm not adding any names to this. Unacceptable. We're not doing it. I disagree. We will agree to disagree. <laughs> all I had to do is adopt him. That's it. It's all it. This is the way. Whatever way you want. You know, let's have a feast. Wait a second. We can't feast together because we can't take our helmets off. We all got to walk away from each other. We can't show our faces. What will we do that for? None of it makes sense. Half-baked religion. None of it. 10 out of 10. So anyway, if you guys liked what you heard here, thank you for listening. Thank you for uh, paying attention to me while I rant about these things. And I get... Try not to get worked up. Get a little worked up. Not that worked up. So catch our full-length audio podcast. We'd really appreciate it if you did. It's on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify. Free. Catch it anytime you want. Bring it to work with you. Hang out with us. We're, we're, we love the party. You love the party. You're going to hear us make some jokes. It's good stuff. Uh, follow us on Instagram. Check out. We have giveaways, all sorts of fun stuff. Uh, but I'm tired of this. I am on to the next one.